Okay, I welcome all of you to uh, English Dhamma discussion. Last time also we couldn't do it. Uh, so we were discussing uh, several suttas in the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, Sangyutta Nikaya is one of the uh, books in the canon Sutta Pitaka where various kinds of connected discourses are compiled. And uh, now we are in a sutta called Sanamana Sutta. So very interesting one. We'll see what what is there for us to learn. So here we have Venerable Dhamma Vijita, Venerable Kenya Dhammo Sada, Kelvin and Kelvik. Dravik. Dravik from where? Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah? Kasun Herat. Okay. So some of us are here and some are joining from the Zoom. So just to start with, I'll, I'll uh, recite the Pali verse. Uh, so that we'll make a start of that. Anyway, ah, yeah, anyway. Uh, Sanamana Sutta. Tithe Majjantike Kale Sannisi Vesu Pakkisu Santeva Braharanyang Tham Bhayang Patibhati Manti. I'll repeat it again. Tithe Majjantike Kale Sannisi Vesu Pakkisu Sanateva Braharanyang Tang Bhayang Patibhati Manti. So, singular translation going like this Siti Maddahanehi Pakshin Isimbulana Kalhi Vanaya Mahatse Hadanagan Nakmini E Mata Biakko Vatehi. Now, this is something uh, mentioned by a, dev, dev, a deity. Deity is telling that he feels frightened when the forest is silent. Can you repeat the translation? Yeah. Yes, this sutta is called Murmuring. And it's the 15th sutta of the Devata Sangyutta. When the, when the noon hour sets in and the birds have settled down, the mighty forest itself murmurs. How fearful that appears to me. Hmm. So probably you have seen that uh, certain times are there. There are no uh, birds in the sky. They all came down. They all came down and they are resting. They may be on the trees and they take a nap. They take a rest. And you probably have seen even the these monkeys. There are certain times of the monkeys. They are not uh, jumping and crawling and you know quarreling and any of thing. They are just lying down and they take a rest. <laughs> so even they are having little break sometime. Uh, very interesting. I have noticed that uh, certain times in monkey that Rilava, so they all don't don't go for any looking for food or they are not uh, quarreling each other, they are not fighting each other, but they also calm down and just relaxing. And just sometimes they help each other and finding the uh, ticks in them. <laughs> so like us, they, are, they take a little break. So similarly here mentioned, uh, sometimes all the birds have come down and they simply came to the trees or to the ground and they take a break and now no, no any noise in the forest. Think like that. So there may be a time, it's completely, now it's a noon time. Noon time, so he, I mean it's very hot. By the way, no, no any sound at all, a complete silence is there. But that complete silence make me frightened. So that's what the deity is telling. Uh, then, uh, then we'll see what uh, the Buddha is telling. Tithe majjantike kale sannisi vesu pakkisu sanateva braharanyang sarati patibhati manti. So Buddha is telling. Siti Maddahanehi Pakshin Isimbulana Kalhi Mahavane Mahatse Handanagana Mini E Mata Sitpinavana Sevatehi. So you can make the English translation. When the noon hour sets in and the birds have settled down, the mighty forest itself murmurs. How delightful that appears to me. Hmm. Now, Buddha says the opposite. So, Buddha says that everything is now calmed down, even the birds are not chirping, uh, everything is silent, that complete silence makes me really happy. <laughs> you know, you can see that the complete opposite, opposite sides. So, typically, we even hate the silence. That's why we switch on the radio, we switch on the TV, 
we want to browse through the internet because the, we, we hate silence we can't appreciate silence so that's the issue with us so we can't we, we want something isn't it we want something to be delight to be delighted so we can't we can't appreciate that emptiness in any way we can't appreciate that nothingness so we need something we need some sort of a triggering to the senses some sort of activation triggering provocation to the senses we can't we can't appreciate the silence so that's an issue actually we all have now actually using this there's a beautiful uh, uh, conversation happen you know that you know ajan amaro in amaravati so they have compiled a book so, uh, i think sound of silence i think that's the name of the book sound of silence you know this uh, when when we are meditating at a one given moment you you attune to a level that the sound of silence is heard it's it's happen like crickets you know little a little uh, kind of a crickets sometimes called crickets the sound of the crickets like grasshopper so something like that this a uh, little li- some unusual during the day time during the day time there is such such uh, happen but it's not immediately happening you have to attune to that because your your mind has to be fairly silent then only you can hear this uh, different kind of a cricket sound probably you have no experience that so anyway i mean for some people it may be frightening so what's going on they might go go and see the doctor <laughs> but that is typically translated as sound of silence so when everything is calm when everything is peaceful there's a murmur this is the sound of silence so you start appreciating it you start see it like a background of the whole system whole universe something like that and your mind is now attuned to that focus to that it also can disappear but we can we can appreciate that rather than being frightened to that i can be happy because no fabrications no thoughts no thinking no noise no outside you know any noise so now everything is cool everything is calm so let me be with it so so that is one area that i like to mention so this is something actually one can experience even through samatha meditation you don't need to go to vipassana to experience it so when even when is one is practicing samatha meditation so you may be able to calm down the thinking the the important thing is that the stopping of the proliferation the mind has to completely let go of the proliferation mind has to come to the fair silence of the mind in the sense the thinking has stopped now it has faded away now no thinking inner chatter completely disappeared now you are in a very silent mood so everything is calm now like now, now say now we have rain now when raining it's some sort of noise but assume a time when no rain at all then silence is there similarly our mind is also every time raining thinking 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 too much thinking like raining very noisy but when rain stops nothing is there you completely calm no relax so that that state can we appreciate that silence not yet uh, we haven't yet practiced the vipassana but still some silence is there now say for example you are in the walking session say at the beginning you get a lot of thoughts many distractions but later again and again as you are applying your mind to the object so then these thoughts become faded away they become weaker and weaker ultimately you may reach to a state there are no thinking so mind is silent but still you can feel you are fully alive so while you are fully alive and attentive still you can feel things but mind is silent so these are the areas actually we need to look forward because otherwise what happen is uh, we think that the mind always have to think isn't it so our our wrong perception is that in order for me to feel living the mind should think i think therefore i am so that's the as the old uh, uh, i think decarts rene decarts uh, statement uh, with respect to this uh, western psychology they think they are saying so there are thinking going on thoughts going on so i am feeling the presence of myself 
But when no thinking, when completely the thinking has subsided, still you are living. You are living in a more peaceful state, you are in a more calm, relaxed state. So those are the very beautiful areas. Actually, the meditation, sometimes people consider it as very dry type of a thing. But when we are looking at from these kind of angles, these are very aesthetic in a way. Now we are, we are, we are going to enter different domains in the mind, isn't it? So we are, we are in a typical, very noisy domain every time. Very active, noisy, uh, you know, cluttered kind of a domain we usually reside. But the meditation actually helps us to jump or switch to a very peaceful, calm, relaxed, silent domain. But fully aware. You are not sleeping. Fully aware. So that is one area I like to highlight. So while they are, probably you might hear this sound of silence. That is one thing. But this sound of silence is also not permanent. So at one, one age of your meditation, you might hear it. But as you continue... It also may disappear. Assume now you are practicing vipassana. You practice vipassana and as a result of that, again, more, more wise way, you can stop inner chatter. Now previously, because of the strength of the samadhi, the inner chatter has subsided. But now, since you are not promoting any proliferation, since you have understood this futile nature, and how this coming and going, arising and passing away, that wisdom from has reduced the reduced the proliferation. That wisdom has cut off the proliferation. Now mind come to a deeper deeper kind of a silence. Now there is no sound of silence either. No crickets now. Now you are in a utter silence, complete silence. So this is the area actually I like to highlight in the vipassana particularly. So you may be have the potential to reach that. So the sankharas are calmed down. Sankharas, you know, the formations have stopped basically. And thinking also have stopped. And your mind is very clear. No no sanya, no perception, so no uh, mental cluttering. Mind is very clear. And just be there. Just enjoy that. Enjoy the peace. Peace of the inner silence. So, we don't need to be afraid of it. So that's why Buddha reiterated, so you fellow feel frightened to it, but I am enjoying it. <laughs> you see the opposite? I mean, typically, typically the worldings hate the silence, they want the noise, they want the break dance. <laughs> but Buddha, he appreciates the silence, the peace. He's, he's enjoying it. Very beautiful, the, how the opposite sides are talking. Anything you please? Thank you, Bhante, for your uh, great, great way of interpreting this. Um, the Bhikkhu Bodhi mentions um, a commentary that says, in the dry season at high noon when the animals and birds are all sitting quietly, a great sound arises from the depths of the forest as the wind blows through the trees, bamboo clusters, and hollows. At that moment, an obtuse deva, unable to find a companion with whom to sit and converse amiably, uttered the verse stanza, the first stanza. And then it says, uh, But when a bhikkhu has returned from alms round and sitting alone in a secluded forest abode, Attending to his meditation subject, abundant happiness arises. Um, so, it's a, uh, a little different, Super different yeah. but um, still the same. I liked <laughs> your interpretation of how, you know, we become disturbed if it's things settle down and our mm. minds are becoming. I think uh, I've heard Chief Bonte mention that. Um, so he actually pointed out in the book, you no, know, actually that sound of silence book by Ajahn Amaro, it was translated to Singhala. In in, in Sri Lanka here at Nisarnani, it was translated to Singhala by one lady called Rani Rajapaksha. So Nihande Hand. Nihande Hand. Oh Atulita Savandi. Atulita Savandi is the Singhala term given. So Deya Bhante Dhammajiva has referred this verse. Yeah, yeah. This verse he has referred 
explaining the this is the this is the silence that buddha is talking now here silence in the sense uh, kind of i mean as i said the sound of silence because everything the the the, the environment has silenced but that silence is something frightening to the deva because he can he can bear it because everything has stopped or what's going to what's going to happen so I, therefore i don't like to agree with bikku bodhi he is telling that uh, when everything calm down when even the birds are not chirping now the wind blows and makes the sound yeah. but rather than saying so i see the opposite so every, everybody calm down everything has stopped now the now the now it is frightening Silence is frightening now. Makes sense to me yeah, right? yeah. for Jamajiva Bhante's interpretation. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I also it, like that. It makes more Because sense you know to that, It makes more you know sense. The murmur, yeah. the term murmur yes. is for a very silent murmuring. Yeah. Silent murmur. It is yes. how I mean, I mean, when That's the wind true. is blowing, it makes a huge sound. Right. So then why are we interpreting it as a murmur? Yes. So I, I don't uh, think that we can uh, agree with that. Hmm? Yeah. So I feel that murmur right now available is the sound of silence. Yes. That is a little murmuring, very subtle murmuring. Yes. So that is frightening for the deva, <laughs> for the deva. Yeah. But for the yogi, to the Buddha, it's enjoyable. Yes, I appreciate that because, uh, yeah, I've noticed that often Bhikkhu Bodhi's translations are very. Um, he said that this these stanzas were very difficult to translate mm, there's yeah, some very yeah. difficult things to understand mm. and but this this is a commentary spk commentary uh. that said this uh. so i i like what dama jiva bante says that don't trust these commentaries too mm. much because they're coming from kind of i mean i think they're a good place to start often because they tell word meanings some, and, some meaning is but, there but this one uh, yeah this one's a more subtle hmm. sort of a sutta and uh, yeah i really uh, find your teaching hmm. and dhamma jiva's commentary very uh, inform very much more informative to the way we practice and yeah. so the sound of silence is a very great uh, topic taken by ajan sumedho and ajan amaro so really beautifully they explain that's very very appreciable and that's what we also translated in in sarnavane that the uh, sound of silence book was translated to singhala also because it's a some deep subject because sometimes people misled when everything calms down they hear this un you know uh, how to say uh, uh, unconventional type of a sound this cricket sound of the crickets it's i mean they they feel frightened probably they might think okay i am going through some mistake i have to see the doctor <laughs> so often they they try to see a doctor <laughs> and it's a very i i have it it's it, well there's something that's called tinnitus exactly yeah and uh i actually suffered um hearing damage when i was a musician uh. because you play the cymbals hmm. and they're very high pitched so it my what i read about tinnitus is that when when you lose your high range hearing mm mm-hmm. uh the brain sends the signal of that high range so you hear it all the time oh. it's in, it's a like i i can hear it right now really it's uh so that's from hearing damage mm, mm. but uh, you know i've heard that also uh, another drummer the famous drummer was saying that some people even commit suicide because of the wow. sound so it's interesting that people do become disturbed mm. uh, by it but even though mine is like i can hear it clearly just right now so um even when it's but when i've no i've noticed when i'm meditating in in a deep concentration that mm. um there's no i have no sense of it right uh i could notice it if i wanted to but i think the the um, calming and tranquil qualities are like they're more prominent mm. or, i th- it seems uh so there's no no bother of it at all exactly exactly at the beginning only it bothers and then they start reporting it bante what's this happening i feel i hear the sound then when she say okay just enjoy it then they start enjoying it it's no more no more an issue yeah it's a kind of a milestone that we achieved in our meditation okay once we reach some area so you are in a chattering has completely stopped and you are attuned to this uh, sound of silence and you can simply enjoy it usually we are not taking it for vipassana we are it's simply it's appear like a kind of background on top of that we need to further and further practice so the practice might further 
produce it and ultimately it might also disappear and you come to a complete silence now there is say one may reach a, a silence now there is no the sound of the crickets still now complete silence may be there even that may be frightening but that is something one has to appreciate either so these are very interesting yeah, yeah I, i think it might be that tinnitus might be actually a um, I'm sure that it's more common these days because oh. people wear the earbuds oh, and I listen see. to music very loud oh. as well mm. and uh, go to concerts and the music's very loud. Mm. So that damages your hearing and then that mm. tinnitus happens. It's called tonight? Tinnitus. 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 Right, right. Yes. Right. Tinnitus. Not, yeah. uh, not tendinitis, which you have in your wrists, right. but uh, tinnitus. Mm. And so... Yeah, and you notice it. And I think, well, I'm sure that people also purchase, like, recordings of the ocean so they can go oh. to sleep oh. because uh, it blocks out the sound of this this sound right. that, that right. bothers people. Right. But right. Uh, I've never had it bother me. I've been meditating for almost, well, 24 years. So mm. about the time I, I was meditating before I quit playing music, and then I keep meditating i've never had any problem Correct. with that mm. um, it's never bothered mm. me actually i have a issue uh, you know that uh, <clears throat> if i if i concentrate too much to books or any matter or something then at night as a mm, kind of a hum sound comes you know hum sound humming sound the humming sound is little disturbing and it's difficult to sleep when a mm, kind of humming is there in the in the in the in the mind but when the things are happening smoothly i mean no stress or no too much uh, you know screen time or no too much brain time then things are it's it not it does not appear you know sometimes i feel when we are strenuously overuse the brain it can create some noise in the mind hmm. also uh caffeine increases ah, it i see they, uh, when i were read about tinnitus they said don't drink caffeine ah. and i've noticed when i have drank i've quit drinking caffeine but really? it, if you um stop drinking caffeine if you stop drinking caffeine and then you have some caffeine you'll notice it's I more see. I see because it is it is more possible to happen when the environment is dry i have noticed when the environment is you know too much uh, with some humidity hay, rain and all so it is rarely happen but if the environment is very dry and again i have used the brain too much too much uh, concentration too much activities then if too much use of brain can generate that sound yeah so caffeine dries you out exactly. but it Pretty also like, i think it also really somehow it's stimulating your nervous system maybe and that is connected with your hearing your maybe. nerves mm. I, it's I disturbing actually it is disturbing i mean yeah. it's it uh, it uh, basically disturbs the sleeping it's very difficult to sleep when it is there then i had to go out and relax again and calm down and uh, relax relaxation basically helps me to overcome that but otherwise very difficult to even sleep when it is there yeah 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 anything to share any of your experiences kenya how about you <laughs> any sounds from kenya <laughs> uh, i saw you know i say i i have actually suffered from tinnitus as well uh uh-huh. and i i went to see an ent for that really and his prescription was avoid loud music and sleep to soft music uh uh-huh. that was his prescription mm-hmm. no medicine no, no nothing medicine. but it's been years since i've had tinnitus again uh-huh. it, it just mean, disappeared have you gone through that medication and how you have you recovered from it yes yes like i said it's been years since i've heard that high pitched sound high pitched sound yes when it was when it was there it would wake me up in the night i see thinking you know like there's some alarm going off there's some loud noise right but once i open my eyes i find that it's just very quiet very quiet pin drop silence mm. but when the tinnitus was there it was a really high pitch mm. it was scary waking you up from sleep <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> so i haven't heard it in years right so ah, you yeah. haven't heard it in years now yes that ah, was great. many years ago great. yeah um anyways um 
back to the sutta mm-hmm. um it reminds me of a friend that i one of my old friends she told me that she can't stay in her house without the tv on oh, i see like even when she's cleaning when she's in the kitchen she just has to have the tv on Correct. because she cannot stand the silence yeah, exactly that's what that's what i like to i like to know because this is a kind of an issue we sometimes have so people hate silence because people can't bear the silence so that is the issue actually buddha is addressing here now when even the birds chirping has stopped everything has stopped the the, the forest become utterly silent so the, the deity was frightened by that but buddha was enjoying that so that is the opposite uh, situation that we need to actually uh, may see yeah, yeah yeah and i think we or i am not that different from my friend because even though i don't have a tv or a video <laughs> the thought thinking yeah this, that's still the noise the mm, noise that exactly. is still always exactly yeah mm. that, that's very true now i mean i mean, it remembers me another point you know that uh, buddha talks about the viveka the kind of a seclusion so he talks at three levels kaya viveka chitta viveka upadi viveka the kai viveka is where you uh, you separate from the crowd and you find a, a kind of a secluded place and you you are simply alone so that is the kai viveka the chitta viveka is where say hindrances are abandoned now no hindrances you are you are this uh, what you call the kama chanda vyapada tina middha uddachu kucha vichikicha you know the sensual desire ill will sotantopa uh restlessness and worry and the doubt these things are abandoned temporarily so that's we can say the chitta viveka upadi viveka is where that all the upadis are abandoned you are not grasping anything at all no fetters no defilements now that is the complete kind of the viveka complete seclusion so therefore in the silence also you may have different levels different uh, say areas so you may go to a place there are no si- no sounds say a silent place so that is very much like kai viveka so there are no external sounds available and there may be another level say you are you are attuned to the sound of silence and your defilements or the hindrances are subsided and you come to a, another level of silence but assume uh, another level so where the hindrances are abandoned uh defilements are fairly weakened and your mind is very much like endowed with uh, say wisdom it stops the conceptual proliferation fairly then you are reaching a uh, utter silence so this is very interesting i mean you know the si- silence of the mind the inner silence is something that we ne- we have to start appreciating otherwise what happens is we we start hating it we feel bored about it and we think okay what next to do what next to do so that's a that's a problem we are having so why why can't we enjoy that silence i mean you have reached the bottom just be there just dwell there just enjoy that isn't it because i mean sometimes people are always asking what next what next what next <laughs> so that's a problem so you you reach something what next okay you go to another level what next okay you go to another level what next be there that's it <laughs> that's the end <laughs> so <clears throat> that's why sometimes certain uh, say monks or certain brahmins they come to the buddha and they keep on asking questions say one example is that uh, unnab brahman one unnab brahman that is a brahmin and he asks the buddha okay bante uh, now the our, our minds are very proliferating and it is always Uh, connected with the external objects and uh, now i with the si- sights ear with the sounds nose with the sound uh, smells tongue with the taste body with the tangibles so who is the one ultimately consume all this that's the answer uh, that's the question he is asking from the buddha and then buddha says the mind is the one consuming everything he is the taster he is the one enjoying everything now one problem is as we continue that cycle so many many things come and clutter in the mind we remember many things we gather many things necessary things and unnecessary things you know that mind even though it is the consumer 
So all that senses when they are operating, they gather more and more things and we hear, smell, taste, see everything. So everything come and clutter the mind. So what is the remedy? What is the refuge for the mind? What do you think? Quiet? No. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. <laughs> Very beautiful Sutta. Mindfulness is the remedy. Buddha say. Mindfulness is the refuge. Satya Brahmana Manasa Patisarana. Satya Brahmana Manasa Patisarana. So the Patisarana, the Pilisarana, the refuge for the mind is the Sati, the mindfulness. And then he is asking, Bhante, what is the refuge for Sati? What is the refuge for mindfulness? Any guess? Very beautiful area. Buddha says, sir, liberation. Vimukti. Nothing is there now. Everything is given up. So mind mind has so basically arrived the kind of no grasping. Something like that. And then he is asking, Bhante, what is the <laughs> refuge for liberation? <laughs> then Buddha said, Nibbana. Nibbana is the refuge for liberation. You know, liberation is not possible till you have defilements. That's how I, I understood. So, liberation is something kind of a birthright if we have no defilements. But till the defilements are there, so we again and get again get disturbed while in the in the liberated state. So, the mind is liberated, nothing is there, nothing to grasp, no defilements. But, I mean, but defilements are again and again drop us, again and again tangle us. So Buddha, Buddha's answer like, okay, Nibbana is the refuge. Then the interesting question comes, Bhante, what is the refuge for Nibbana? <laughs> Any answer? <laughs> what do you think? I think the Buddha might have said that enough, you have gone exactly, too far with exactly, your questions. Exactly, that's the point. Say, Brahmin, you have gone to the end of the questions. This is the end. Nibbana is the end. Brahmacharya Paryosana is the end. The You know, the culmination of the the Brahmacharya life is the Nibbana. So likewise, so when we reach the inner silence, okay, you just be there. Just enjoy. You don't need to proliferate there. So that that's another question in the... That's interesting question... Uh, you know, Venerable Kottita and Venerable uh, Sariputta, they often have very deep discussions. So, Venerable Kottita is asking, when your mind is not proliferating, taking the sights, sights as an object. And similarly, when not proliferating, taking sounds, smells, taste, tangible and the mental objects. So, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So then, then that, so that question also not relevant. That's why Venerable Sadipatta is telling. So you are you are trying to proliferate where non-proliferation is there. So this proliferation is actually the boundary of the senses. When your senses are operating, and that is where you see things, hear things, smell, taste, tangibles, all that. That is the boundary of the senses. But this non-proliferation is where the senses are non-operative like they are they are at their kind of calm state they are free state in a way how to say uh, what is that uh, hibernate kind of a state okay so when that is the when you are asking what's next it's a useless question you don't need to ask just be just be there so likewise, I feel this inner silence is something therefore a very interesting subject. So particularly in Vipassana, one may arrive that. So sometimes we call it as inner stillness, stillness rather than inner silence. But very much like the same thing we are talking. So the senses are operative, but they are not proliferating. They are not promoting any thinking. Thinking has basically stopped. And silence is internally there and no defilements, and you are relaxing, but not into the sleepiness, just be there. Just enjoy that inner silence. Because the problem is that people sometimes think, okay, I have to always look at something, always think about something, I have to investigate something, in the in the Vipassana point of view, I have to always investigate something. That is also not necessary. I mean, the investigation, once you do uh, for a fair amount, 
so mind may give up everything and you the mind get uh, released so you you be there in that release state so that that is the, the area that i like to uh, you know highlight because otherwise we are always in the sankhara world we are always in the condition world we we can't even taste this what is what is called unconditioned isn't it i mean I mean, I am not telling that we are arahants, but at least through vipassana, when we reach some sort of a, you know, relative uncondition, not may may not be the perfect uncondition, but some sort of a relative uncondition. Okay, you just enjoy it. Anything, Asma, you have to say? Um, yes, um, and I think, and I've he- I've heard from different sources that this is really the. one and only teaching of the buddha mm. that sabbe dhamma nalang abhinivesa mm. uh, nothingness emptiness silence mm. beyond that there's nothing, nothing just silence mm. oh. yeah, i i also think that because i mean if you keep on questioning and if you keep on looking at for different different states then we never reach the end so that's the in the in the pottapad sutta that's the theme so buddha say say you refine your perception level by reaching the second jhana by abandoning the first jhana okay then you reach the third jhana by abandoning the gross level of the second jhana now you are at the third now while they are at the third you are thinking about the fourth abandoning the third suppose you come to the fourth now you have problems in the fourth now you go to the arupa akasa nancha you give up the fourth okay now you are at akasa nancha now while you are at akasa still you are not feel happy you want to go to the next always going next 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 they are with say now you come to a conclusion okay i stop this process anymore i don't want to go to a new perception level rather i want to give up even the existing one i am not thinking about a ne- next one let me calm down even the existing one not intentionally achieving to try to achieving a new one so that's the radical decision he is taking you read the pottapada sutta very 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 you know very important and very deep part that is we are continuously what has happened again and again we are aiming a different thing aiming a new thing giving up something gross that is necessary by the way but once you reach some level you you need to decide okay now i have come like this giving up gross thing achieving a new new subtle thing make that gross and then giving up that come to another subtle thing okay at one level i decide okay i'll stop this i am not going to intentionally have a new perception level instead i am relax in the existing one i stop inten- making intentions now stop intentions then you touch the nirodha there you touch the cessation very deep subject by the way there you touch the cessation i mean often we miss such teachings what we do is continuously jumping 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 never feel satisfied always you know frustrating looking for something looking for something looking for something never happy even in the spiritual world isn't it even in the spiritual world say in the sensual world we can of course understand never be happy because driven by craving driven by tanha but even in the spiritual world isn't it even the spiritual world we are achieving 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 struggling 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 never happy not feeling enough that feeling enough is a uh, you know a door to nibbana called desireless appanihita appanihita vimokha is something where where you stop desiring things anymore what you are going to get is something unsatisfactory no no point of desiring further i give up desiring no 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 more wishes no more aims i am happy i am satisfied i am utterly contented then the mind liberates think about i mean very different actually it's going against the current now buddha's teaching now when now assume that you have a some beautiful meditative experience you remember it and next time when you are sitting you you want to get that what happen 
you won't you won't get it <laughs> because your your meditation is dependent on craving you want to achieve something i want to do it i want to get that yesterday experience is so fantastic i want i want i want you won't get it but the more you give up okay i don't want anything i am happy right now okay just be calm down relax happy present moment you are there <laughs> so so buddha teaching is very different in that sense you are it is not every time you know intention based rather you calm down the intentions and you relax the intentions you you give up the craving and you are there naturally you are simply there isn't it so these are very interesting areas actually we are exploring so the desireless uh desireless door appanihita vimokka is one interesting door actually we can achieve nibbana <laughs> desireless <laughs> be happy contented nothing more enough <laughs> enough 9:30 <laughs> So I mean it's uh your I mean this this is getting to what in Zen they talk about oh. often I mean because um basically Zen talks about this just most simplest level of can you give up your mm. sense of self basically mm. for Zen it's um they're talking about um emptiness mm-hmm. right and what they say is emptiness of a self mm, exactly so exactly. um you know, Abhi, that is the, exactly the buddha's teaching in the theravada mm-hmm. so what is sunyata so the, yeah. the the definition of sunyata according to the buddha theravada explanation sunyamidam attenava attaniyena va it is empty of a self Yeah. and what belongs to a self yeah i'm not saying that zen has something new no 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 they, what no. they what they did was took buddha's most highest exactly. teaching exactly. and they made that their mm. one teaching correct and so it's zen when you read zen it's very strict mm. it's like um straightforward and to the point right yes and uh i've i heard a conversation between a, a tibetan teacher and a zen teacher one time this is just a long time ago but i remember that uh the tibetan teacher said you know what you're having your students do as you know just that's their only practice that's for us that's the highest form of practice we start with you know the students have to really understand the teachings first there's a lot of study like we're doing we're studying okay. a lot of uh the buddhist teachings so mm. it's interesting that zen <laughs> they just straightforwardly yeah, taking, the taking yeah taking the yeah so it's interesting to uh, that I'm reading I'm reading some zen and it's interesting to see you know how they are you know how you can fit zen into mm. buddha into exactly. the theravada it's mm. the mm. very highest teaching correct that's so, why i like i like to do it is i mean theravada has that part but uh, not given enough prominence in a way they haven't appreciated that for long time so it is there by the way it is there but we need to give give fair amount of recognition interesting yeah, yeah i noticed that dhamma jiva bante gives more recognition of this than mm. you and even katakun katakun thero katakun nyananda thero so he has taken these gems available in the theravada in the suttas and he he highlighted them okay this is the area that you need to pay attention so that is very otherwise i mean we never know that because i my person i myself personally will i will never reach this i mean this kind of explanation if katakuran the tero has haven't uh, taught me so this kind of the teachings because we simply touch the ground maybe we never come to that uh, that kind of a teaching so it's actually we are owe to uh, katakuran the tero bande dhamma jeeva for taking us to this very gems of the dhamma you know otherwise we simply you know just dwell in the basics and the other middle not yeah. reaching not understanding the the higher teachings yeah. very interesting yeah, yeah. very interesting yeah and uh, analio does as uh, well exactly exactly to, uh, so actually nowadays yeah. these these kind of people are there actually katagonde thero was really influential for you know venerable analio and analio bante is now taking katagonde thero's uh, teachings 33 sermons he uh, you know Uh, delivered them free of charge as a university course in the in the numata 
Numata Center something in the Germany. There's one one university. So likewise, he's propagating the thing. Very interesting. Yeah. And he's comparing even the Tibetan teachings, Mahayana teachings, Theravada teachings. He does the comparative analysis also. Very interesting. I mean, these are very good trends in a way. Yeah. yeah. So what is good in different traditions, we are now taking up. Yeah. Okay. Any Anything to add? Yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, yesterday was my first day of meditation. Uh-huh. And I just wanted to know what the purpose of, like what the essence of meditation is, basically right. like why you meditate. Mm. Maybe... Kenya, can you tell why you meditate? <laughs> so why should I ask? <laughs> well, mm, I think my personal reason for meditation is just to stop this race that I am perceiving to be in. Uh, all this doing, doing, which just result in nothing in the end ultimately everything that you're doing is for not for nothing this i don't know maybe i'm saying something too cryptic but this is what i personally feel Mm -hmm. to be the reason for meditation just to put an end to these things that just seem like a dead end road there's nothing that you're doing them for they're just just craving, just wanting things for no reason. That's <laughs> perfectly said. That's that's my reason. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think that's just a result of what you're doing. But in the end, even that inner peace, for what do you even want it? For mm. what? <laughs> Even that may be given up then. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in the end, even that will have to be given up. Uh-huh. Because now you you don't have a reason to be peaceful. Mm-hmm. That because reason, you are in the peace. You became the peace. You became the peace. <laughs> so that thing you were working for to become peaceful, now uh-huh. it's gone. Mm-hmm. So now what do you want to be peaceful for? Mm-hmm. So that inner peace itself, you have to let it go. Yeah. So that's a beautiful term for the Arahant. Kata Karaniyo. The Kata Karaniyo means that what needs to be done, he has done, he has completed. Now nothing to do. So we still have some, you know, some driving going through and we want to do it. I want to become an Arahant. That's the kind of a drive that we all have to have, by the way. But when it is achieved by the Arahant, so he's done. He's, what, to, what needs to be done, he has to complete it. That's there. So Brahmacharya Esana Padipasadha. Brahmacharya Esana. So the Esana is that we are in search of something. We are in search of something. So that in search, that search has now stopped. That's you found it. <laughs> Once you found it, I mean nothing to nothing to have a party. I mean you are there. You just you are there. You became that. Very much like. And that I is also gone. <laughs> I is also gone. <laughs> Very interesting. So anyway, I mean, I, I can simply give you some mundane answer. So, so meditation, I mean, this, I mean, we are talking something very high, <clears throat> you know, some very higher goals. But the meditation still has some mundane goal, mundane, uh, mundane benefits also. And we can think of that also. I mean, because you know that too much thinking that we all are, you know, suffering because of that. That too much thinking because we can't control thinking. Thinking is consuming us in a way that pro- that produce a lot of unhappiness, depression, obsessions, and all that in the mind. So the meditation help us at first to calm it down, relax ourselves. Okay, you just dwell there and calm down yourself. No need to think too much. So have a little bit of control over your mind. So these are some tangible benefits. You start feeling. And uh, the other thing is that often our mind is proliferating about the past, thinking what has happened, regretting about your mistakes and cursing yourself and maybe about the future. Okay, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. You know, too much aspiration sometimes. All that makes us unhappy, frustrated. That may be fairly reduced when you start enjoying the present, dwelling in the present, practicing the mindfulness. And further, say, you are not reacting immediately. You have the capacity to look at a certain situation in a more more sensible way, more 
equanimous way, more wise way. Those are kind of more benefits. Now, as you go on, then you practice vipassana, then you are coming to a deeper understanding of what's really going on. What what we so-called I, what I am so-called the person, what we so-called the, these are different things, individuals, all that. You get a deeper understanding. Then slowly, slowly, we can come to the last kind of a goal. Okay, now there is nothing to do. Okay, I'm there. Uh, just, just reach the essence. So you just enjoy it. Something like that. So so that we can say certain tangible, mundane kind of benefits are also there. And super mundane benefits are also there. So welcome. <laughs> How old are you? 22. 22. Good, good. <laughs> Very interesting. Actually, these are the areas that we need to, in our life, we need to explore. Otherwise, we are simply being materialistic, simply following the desires, and simply governed by the advertisements. <laughs> I wasn't uh. going to come for this. Uh, I'm here on holiday. Uh. So, my sister was going to come here. Uh. So, there was another spot that opened up. And my mom told me to come for this. Because uh. <laughs> ever since I was small, I wasn't this inclined to... Buddhism, because huh. we didn't learn it in school. So I know like bits and pieces. Right. So she told me to come here so I can have like to broaden what little knowledge I have exactly. about it. No problem. Just uh, just enjoy it and it's a different world. <laughs> yeah. This is very, I mean, the thing is, I mean, now this, now your age is the one now exploring. No? We want to explore the world. This Make this also another exploring side of your life. So don't just just carried away by the typical, you know, that instincts. Every time I'm trying to achieve the materialistic achievement, materialistic goal, that also you may have to because for your living and, you know, prosperity and all that, materialistic prosperity. But spirituality is another area that you need to explore. Yeah. 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 Okay, then we'll wind up and please uh, go ahead with the sharing of minutes. Thank you, Bhante, for your teaching. Uh, and thank you for all the great... Uh, comments and questions. May our relatives and all beings share in the merit produced by today's teaching. May all celestial beings share in the merit produced by today's teaching. And may the celestial beings protect the Dhamma exposition and dispensation of the Buddha and his disciples for a very long time. And perhaps the seeds of the Buddha's teaching that have been planted in our hearts and minds may grow, producing path fruition and Nibbana. I invite you to join in the recitation of the traditional Pali verses for sharing the merits.